Your life experience, good or bad, is a gift when you share it with others. At Taxi Chronicles, we allow real riders with real stories to share their gift. So hopefully this episode will intrigue, enhance or inspire you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another episode, another rider. Today is, I think it's a poker day. We've never interviewed anybody who does poker and I don't know the first thing about poker unless the only thing I know about poker is that you have cards <laughs> so hopefully we can all learn something today and nice to have you here Elliot you grab that you got it good to meet you okay so Elliot where are you from first of all and what kind of person were you when you were in school uh, I'm from I'm from Preston and I was kind of quite a sport sporty person in school into football and uh kind of laddie really all the all the normal stuff just going out drinking as soon as we could underage and things like that so yeah it was um kind of a normal northern upbringing really okay so when did you put down the football and pick up the cards uh i started playing poker when i was probably about 13 just casually with friends and i still play quite casually now really it's just that um the buy-ins have got bigger as i've, I've earned more money over the years so you use um you, I don't like to use the term gambling. You were taking risks from when you were thirteen, then. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, just as a uh, a hobby with my my mates, as a kind of group of five or six of us that we used to mm-hmm. used to always want to get together and play with um, a couple of quid here and there. So yeah, yeah. It was... Who introduced you to poker? A uh, good friend of mine, actually, Matt Garrett. Um, he just got a poker set off his grand parents for Christmas I think and uh, and yeah from there we just all started to learn the game a bit and uh, did it, did it um, take time to get your head around poker? Yeah it's, it's a really really complicated game even though it's uh, it kind of gets banded in with all the gambling type stuff and, and a lot of it is but uh, there's a lot a lot a very uh, wide spectrum of talents that you need um, from statistics to, to kind of your body language working out people and, and, and all that type of stuff and, and also having a, a kind of a sound mentality so you don't go too wild and lose all your money. Okay. <laughs> what are the general rules of poker? Just give us an overview. Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, there's... Um, so you get to... The the format poker I play is Texas uh, No Limit Hold'em. So, so... Sorry, there's different forms of poker? Yes, there's different forms of poker. So there's... there's uh, the... the um, the most popular by a mile is um, No Limit Hold'em, which I play. But there's also different formats where you you get different amounts of cards and different betting arrangements and things like that. So yeah. Right, so yeah, you were explaining. Yeah. So the rule, yeah. So the uh, so No Limit Hold'em essentially you get um, you, each player there's a nine nine players typically around a table with one dealer. Um, you all get given a set amount of chips, or, or you pay. Well, for, for tournament poker, you pay a certain value uh, at the start. So, say fifty pounds, for example, you'll get the equivalent of what is twenty thousand in chips, and then you play uh, uh, play to a winner. And the idea is to accumulate as many chips as you can by using the cards that you dealt. So, each hand you get dealt two cards, um, and there's a fir- each player gets dealt two cards and there's a first round of betting Um, three community cards then come out which can be used by anyone that's still in the round of betting and then there's two more rounds of betting until you get to to five cards being being out Um, the first three cards are called a flop the fourth cards called a turn and the final cards called the river and so you just got to um, Try and manoeuvre yourself for through the betting rounds to, to accumulate as many chips as possible, really. Okay. That's, that sounds... You, you kind of lost me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will be honest. But it's it's interesting. Now, you've been making a living off this, is that correct? Uh, not really, no. I've got I've got a full-time job. But I just do it as a, as a kind of a side hustle, really, where I make a few, make a few quid every year for... Um, yeah, as a, as a hobby. I mean... I, Every poker player's dream would to be doing it professionally, but the reality is it's a really difficult thing to do professionally. Right. How many years did it take you before you got confident in the game? Um, probably three years, really. really? Yeah, yeah. It's, and even now, there's 
there's so many different aspects to it. You're always questioning yourself, and there's always a better player than you that would have done something different. So it, that's why it's quite of uh, that's kind of the charm of the game. Really, it's really hard to master. Would you say that you've lost more money than you won? Uh, no, no, I've definitely won more than I've lost over the years. Yeah. What's the yeah. highest amount of money you've won? Uh, I won seven and a half thousand once. That was that was the biggest win. And how long did that take to win? So that was that was about well that was in summer this year. So it's four years from since I started playing. I got my biggest win, and the actual tournament took about eight hours, eight or nine hours. That's a day's work. Yeah, it was a good day. You sure, you don't want to do this full time. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you have to t you have to tell um, all the losses then as well, though, don't you? <laughs> okay, what was uh, <laughs> what was so special about that day apart from winning? Uh, it just kind of uh, the accumulation of putting a lot of effort in trying to learn the game. I do a lot of research and watching YouTubers, reading about strategy and things like that. And when it when it accumulates to a particular session where you've done better than you ever have done in the past, it was uh, it's a good feeling. Learning to walk away as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, it's, that, that's kind of the um, it, what's good about tournament poker is that you can only learn, you can only lose a set amount. So if you buy, if the if the buy into the tournament's a hundred pounds, um, you play until your chips have gone, and if you don't win, you can't lose any more than that set hundred pounds. Can you leave early? You just say no. So it's 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 kind of a, a fight to the death, if you will. So there's like typically say there's fifty entries, top ten percent of entries will be paid. So five people would make money um, what is yeah. it about poker that motivates you to play more yeah I think it's the it's the social aspect really playing live because there's um, there's so many different players from different backgrounds and that you, you kind of you're talking about playing on a net here, or you're no, about physically? no, 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 uh, physically, yeah. So that I much prefer playing physically because you can kind of look into white, look into the whites of someone's eyes, and um, you, you, between hands, you chat to people, you meet new people, you understand their backgrounds, and and uh, yeah, it's it's really kind of although it's although you you just in it for, to win for yourself, it is kind of a social game because you do speak to people throughout as well, so. So you're playing mind games with people? Yeah, you try to, yeah. What are the mind games you play? Do you, like, you bring the woman with the big chest and the beer in? Yeah, so, yeah some of the old school people do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the problem. And the people that just lose it. Yeah, yeah, that's the Vegas stuff, yeah. Yeah, um, Yeah. no, typically it's more... It, nowadays it's more about um, just what you do with your chips and um, making weird and wonderful plays which confuse people and trying to um, no funny noises yeah no funny noises no not uh, there are rules to say that people can't do this to distract people can't do that uh, yeah so yeah yeah there isn't there isn't there's there's certain things that people get away with and then it typically if it's if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation then you can do what you want with there's more than what more than two people um in a particular hand then it's bad etiquette to start talking <laughs> So what? Um, so in the movies, you were, I'm not sure if it's poker or play, but you always see people talking and kind of you can say jiving with each other. And really, you know. Yeah, yeah. But what's the most amount of people who's played the game? Most amount of people yeah, who played what? in any one game. Sorry. Uh, well, up to kind of ten thousand. Like there's the what? Uh, yeah. That's it, that's not. Physically, isn't it? That's... Yeah, no, no, yeah, it can be, yeah, physically. So, like, the World Series of Poker um, in Las Vegas, there's a main event each year which costs $10,000 to buy in. I haven't personally played it, but um, people from all over the globe travel to play this one tournament. Um, yeah, and you can get up to, I, th I think the max is somewhere, something like nine and a half, ten thousand, which they've had in one tournament. So. Is that like a, someone who's a cowboy wins or something? Yeah, yeah, it can, it can be anyone, really. There was... Um, there was a lad, a lad this year from London actually that finished third. He, he won three million dollars. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How long is it? Three years. I'm thinking about learning to play this game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to, you want to get learning, mate. That, how, do you know that his background? Has he been playing for years? Or yeah, I, I think he's calculated. Yeah, he's a similar age to me. I think he's about, he's about 25. I think. Um, okay. 
yeah, he's a, he's definitely a professional player, and he's just um, he's just learnt the game inside out and um, done. Gone over to Vegas, got played really well, got really lucky, and won won a massive amount of money. What kind of character do you need to have to be good at this game? Uh, What's you, personal skills? You've got to be able to control your emotions and make, um, and you've got to be you've got to be able to learn from making the wrong decision over and over again, and, and not and try not to do it again, and and don't let it affect you mentally. Uh, and you've also got to be very responsible because, like you said, there is the seedy amount, there is the seedy side of it where it can. It does cross cross over with gambling where people can lose absolute fortunes and money that they can't afford. So you've just got to be confident in your own in yourself. If you, if you start in the movies and I don't know what game they're <laughs> playing, I always have to revert to the movies. That's all I know about this poker business. You see, like some back alley game, and, and you know things can get quite violent. Have you ever been yeah. in a predicament where it's been like that? No, no, no. I've always played in kind of regulated environments there's there's, de- there's been arguments at the table there's been people squaring up to each other and things like that but it's, there's always security around so oh security the, just tells them both to sit down yeah either sit down or get out type thing you yeah, know yeah. but I haven't seen any real violence or anything so like who that. makes so it's security do you have a dealer someone who gives out the cards yeah yeah so there's a dealer that um, is employed by the casino yeah and is there something about the ace card? The ace card's a really good card to have. Yeah, ace is the best card you can get, yeah. Why is that yeah. so good? Uh, it's just a, it's just in, t- in hand rankings in terms of the game itself. It's If you get two aces, that's the, that's the best start in two cards that you can get. Um, they can be beaten by... By the time all five community cards are out, you can you can get things like a royal flush, which is like a, da- a ten jack, king, queen... Ace, all of the same. Suit. Oh, so one after another. Yeah, the yeah. Same hearts. Sort yeah, all the same. Way. If you can get them all the same, same uh, combination, same. Uh... Mm. Do you see yourself playing that game for life, and would you teach your son that game? Yeah, yes, and yes, yeah. It's so long as it's played in a responsible manner, then it, it's a, a really, really good mind game to play. It keeps you, you constantly questioning yourself. Uh, using your brain, using your mental game, and it's um, yeah, I'd, I would recommend it to anyone really for as long as you do it responsibly. Responsibly, that's good. Do you have to pay taxes on your money? Not in the UK, no. Really? No, yeah, it's gambling. It, it, it goes under the same uh, rules as gambling, so yeah, no, no tax. Really? So gambling, you don't pay taxes? Yeah, no tax, no, not at all, no. Unless in the US, you do, but not in the UK. And, I didn't know that. Yeah. In Spain and places like that, you do, but yeah, for some reason, in the UK, really? mm, we get away with it. I wonder why that is. Yeah, I'm not sure. I just think it's. But don't we? Is there such thing as an illegal gambling place? So if if you decided, you know, in America, in the mo- I say it in the movies again, where people play they're gambling and they're gambling in their own house with a couple of guys. Yeah. And they say, oh, well, you're playing a legal game. So in England, it wouldn't be illegal because you don't pay taxes, so you could do what you want to do. Yeah, I think there are some rules about um, you have to have a license. If you're playing, uh, if you're organising a game as like to make money on yourself as like a commercial, then you have to have a gambling license. If you're just playing between friends at home, I don't think you need. I think it's all legal. But mm-hmm. um, okay. So to the audience out there, if you're hearing rock and roll music in the background, it's the diehard anti-Brexit people who <laughs> said the wheels have fallen off the butt of Brexit's, Brexit's lies and they're protesting they're a bit of the old and goldies but that's what the music's for in the back <laughs> <laughs> so what does the future hold for you then? Um, just just keep staying happy really playing playing a bit of poker here and there still working not, not taking it too seriously oh, trying to get a big win <laughs> Letting it off with Boris, isn't it? <laughs> so what? <laughs> so what do you do for a living? Uh, I work as as a buyer for a nuclear company Ooh, that um, in supply chain. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we well, thank you for that for that interview. Um, but the last thing I'm going to ask you is, what's the gift you want to leave with the world? Gift I want to leave with the world. Um, 
Uh, I think it's just really important to spread happiness and um, keep people uh, where you can have an impact on people's mental health. Do that, uh, whether it's just spreading, um, just, just doing a na- nice deed for someone that needs it on a daily basis. I think it's really important. Well, thanks a lot for that. Yeah, thank you. And we wish you well. Cheers. We hope you liked that Taxi Chronicles interview. Don't forget to share and subscribe to get the latest episode. Ever considered investing in a continent with the fastest growing economies and population on Earth? The same continent that holds 30% of the world's known natural resources. Listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories, where you hear real investors with real stories from around the world share their experience of investing in Africa. We post Monday and Thursday at 10am British Standard Time.